soccer first comes to Argentina with British citizens. Uh, there was a sizable British community in Argentina. Uh, the British owned most of the railroads. They owned uh, most of the public utilities. Uh, and by the first decades of the 19th, of the 18th, the last decades of the uh, 19th century, uh, Britons and their Argentine descendants uh, had founded a number of clubs to play soccer. Some of these clubs actually started as cricket clubs and play soccer. Uh, some of the railroads also founded soccer clubs. But the first real league was the first decade of the 20th century, um, and that league uh, was dominated by one, whoops, um, by one club, alumni, uh, or alumni, right? Uh, alumni was originally the um, English high school, but the league rules said that you couldn't call it by the name of an institution, so it was called alumni. Uh, and they dominated completely that first decade of soccer. Uh, and it was basically, by the way, a very much upper class institution. This is not as clear as I'd, I'd like it, but if you can look at these, these events at a Luminae game in 1906, uh, and you can see they're extraordinarily well dressed. So you can tell it's an upper class kind of group here. Um, by the next decade, soccer had become dominated by immigrants and native-born Argentines, but non-British immigrants. Uh, it was much more working class. Um, and almost all the clubs that are going to dominate soccer were formed by groups of young men who want to play soccer. The major clubs that exist today grew out of clubs that were formed by these young boys. Uh, and, you know, there's still a few important clubs that have been formed by the British uh, my favorite, in terms of a name anyway, is a team from the city of Rosario, which is called Newell's Old Boys. Newell uh, was the principal of an English language high school. And so it was Newell's Old Boys. Uh, but that's an exception. Let me point out that soccer, the structure of soccer in Argentina is very, very different than the structure of the big leagues in the uh, United States. Soccer clubs are, in fact, clubs. There is no owner. Uh, people belong to the club. Uh, in other words, they are members. They support the club by paying dues. Uh, members elect the president and the governing board. And, you know, the club also, in many cases, supports other kinds of activity, activities as well as soccer, uh, other sports, dances, cultural events, and so on. Uh, they were and are membership organizations at their best and their worst. Uh, some of these clubs have become extraordinary large and complex organizations. Um, and internal politics for these clubs resemble the internal politics of all such organizations. Some of them run very nicely, and some of them are incredibly nasty. 